Welcome to Cox OC Connection. I'm Lacey Kelly and this is Civic Connection and today we're welcoming Justin Wallen who is the COO for Probolsky Research. Welcome Justin. Well, thank you. Your firm provides pro bono polling for the Association of California Cities which we very much appreciate and we just completed a poll on some critical issues within Orange County. Um, let's jump right in. What were the key findings of this public poll? Sure. Well, it was a fun poll because we got to talk about things that aren't often spoken about, uh, perhaps sometimes not around the dinner table, but we found that there's a higher level of awareness of some of these things than we would have imagined. So right off the top, the top level is that there's a much greater understanding of the needs for infrastructure in Orange County. Uh, and to some degree the needs to fund that infrastructure as well as this core kind of mission critical item of our water. Uh, a couple of the fun uh, numbers pulling right out, we've got the results here. Uh, a third, well, a little bit more, 37%, don't feel that our infrastructure is adequately funded. That's compared to about 46% who do. Um, that leads us to the next question, of course, of who should pay. And in Orange County, they say the state should pay for it, largely. Uh, that's kind of followed by uh, local governments, uh, then followed by end users, residents, business owners, that sort of thing. And at the very end, the Fed. Uh, and as I mentioned in the opening, water is huge. Uh, fully 91% of uh, Orange County voters feel that uh, the elected leaders in Orange County should prioritize making a safe and reliable water supply. Okay. Well, mentioning water, there are two major water proposals in California right now. Um, anything surprising on the results uh, for Orange County in that area? Sure. Uh, a lot of things. First off, we've got this massive proposal up in Northern California, this uh, Bay Delta Conservation Plan. It's, it's, it's massive in many ways, both in the, the territory that it, uh, it covers and in the, the money that it takes to, to get it done. And in the upheaval, that, of course, that'll happen when, it, when the, it, it actually occurs. It has tunnels and all sorts of mysterious things going on. But when explained to Orange County voters, 65% support this thing, um, and c compared to a mere 19% who don't, uh, which is a remarkably high number when it's something that we know that's not dinner table conversation. The drought may be dinner table conversation, but this BDCP is not. But when explained to them in fairly antiseptic terms, people have a visceral support for it, and it's a deep support. Um, this is especially interesting for me insofar as that um, you know, voters are, seem to be understanding that you can no longer really conserve your way out of the problem. This, uh, this illustrates that. Uh, again, who's going to pay for it? You know, nearly one half, 49%, say they're not willing to pay more on their water bills to fund this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of on the surface looks tough, but that's compared to 44% who say they're willing to spend at least $3 more a month on their water bill. So there's a lot of work to be done there in terms of education and building that support, but there's something to start with. Uh, in conservative Orange County, there's a little bit more support for the water bond than there isn't, uh, which is surprising. 45% support it, 43% oppose it. Um, so that's, uh, the bond's a little bit more palatable than reaching into your own wallet. Sure. So in public polls, you often test messaging. What were the things uh, that were most significant with regards to the water bond that are resonating with Orange County voters? Sure. The key things here, the key terms, are water storage and uh, water recycling for local water reliability and quality. Uh, fully 62% of voters become more likely to vote for the bond knowing this, that, that $4 billion will be committed to this. Uh, in fact, it makes 45% of those who originally said they would oppose the bond become more likely to vote for it. And it makes 56.8%, um, call it 57%, of those who are unsure more likely to, to, to support it. So that's, that's definitely a mover message. Sure, sure, yeah. absolutely. Okay, and we're in the middle of an unprecedented drought um, with mandatory water restrictions. And um, we're finding that uh, our voters are really okay with that mandatory uh, water use conservation. Can you tell us a little bit more about that result? Yeah, that part is fascinating because it's, it, it kind of speaks to this dichotomy that water agencies and government agencies are, have to face right now. You know, over the past two decades or more, um, agencies up and down California have done an extraordinary job of educating people as to the need to conserve, 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 conserve. And these are the different ways you can do it, and these are different uh, uh, items that you can use, and people get that. Um, and it, this is kind of a byproduct of that insofar as folks uh, are engaged largely, they're themselves conserving, and they look at people who may not be conserving, water wasters, as kind of the bad players in this, in this act. Um, so, you know, they view that, that some sort of punitive measure in limiting water uh, being, a, um, being a reasonable approach to modifying behavior. I mean, the interesting part about that is it, it, it presents this other issue, which is 
surprisingly reflected in support of the BDCP of how do you educate voters that you can't conserve your way out of this problem. Water agencies knows that, know that, we know that, um, but that's the second part of the education process and it appears in that earlier data point that support of BDCP to a large extent um, we have a good starting point, but there's a lot of work to be done. Okay, so our water districts are doing a good job educating our public, it sounds like. Yes, they are. Yeah, they, they really <laughs> Very are. good. We um, asked a question on Prop 13. Our Association of California Cities Board recently took a unanimous uh, decision to support and uphold the, the um, substantive parts of Prop 13. Um, can you tell us what the voters are saying about changing Prop 13? Sure, um, and we see this reflected up and down the state, but in Orange County, um, your, your board can rest well knowing that they voted that way because voters have a deep, deep uh, liking, likeness for this, uh, for Prop 13. It's wildly popular with voters, uh, uh, kind of in the same token, it's as wildly popular with voters as it is with policymakers who are trying to get their hands on those potential funds. Sure. Uh, here in Orange County, 63% lower, oppose lowering that threshold from two thirds down to uh, 55% uh, in order to approve any tax increase or bond to fund infrastructure. It's a big, big number. And, and, and of that number, really the compelling space for, for our electeds to recall is that fully 55% uh, strongly oppose this. So there's a deep, deep uh, intensity of opposition to this. Okay. Well, thank you for those insights and we appreciate Probalski's uh, partnering with the association and thank you for visiting with us today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us on Civic Connection. We'll see you next time.